Okay, we are back. Aston J. Last session. Oh, no, it's here. Play. Which one's play? Can't see. I think this is play. The following scene is representative of the final or termination phase of filial therapy. Um, we'd like to start with you, Esten. So let's go out and, and do your demonstration play session with Jay. He is looking at his dad. The look of love. He loves his dad. Talk about a bimonic state. Like his dad's looking. Remember the mask in the beginning? Remember how the dad was disgusted by that mask we put on? It's, it's just magic. It's magic. Look at that look. Well, it following everything, following his lead. You could have said, well, what, what, what do you think? Does he have the money or not? 
But instead, you're like, that little part of you that's like, I don't know, I'm a little bit with my son, came out. You have to think about it? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's perfect. All right, you have 30 minutes to find the money. You call me back or I'm going to stick a knife in this kid. You got that? Okay, the number. Yeah, the number is 555-3401. Right, 30 minutes. And no funny stuff. You got that? Okay, I'm going to call. Okay, now he's going to call. You're going to answer the phone and you're going to talk to him. Okay. You got the money? Has he got the money? You got the ticket? Yeah, he's asking. He says he's got it. Good. Is he going to bring it? Okay, you going to bring it over here? All right. He's going to bring it over here. Okay. 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 You're sure he's going to bring it? Okay, you're sure you're going to bring it? You're not lying to me, are you? He says he's going to bring it. He promises. Don't have to bring any police. No police. Don't bring any police. Come by yourself. No funny stuff. Right. Okay, you got 30 minutes to get over here. The address is 2522 Mulberry. Right. Hurry up. Okay, he says he's coming. Okay, now he's going to come knock on the door. Uh -huh. Okay, give you $5,000 now. You are time. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay he's going to come to the door. Right, and he's going to... He's going to get that money. Right. So you're going to go to the door and get the money from him and come back and get you. And then you're going to count. Okay. <laughs> Answer the door. Who's there? Jay's father? You got the money? All right. I'm going to count this money, and then I'm going to bring him home if there's enough money. You got that? All right. Okay, I'll okay, count the money to make sure there's enough. All right. Okay, is there enough? Yes, that's really important. Okay, there's enough money here. You're lucky. You lucked out. He brought all 10000 of it with him. Hey, what are you going to do with my money? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend it. What do you think I'm going to do with the money? Spend it on what? Well, that's not your business. $10,000 is a lot of money, you know. You shut up. We're going to take you home now. You got that? Okay, now you're going to put me in the car. Uh -huh. You're going to take me home. And then you're going to let me off. And you're going to leave and I'm going to go in. Okay. So my dad's going to be real happy to see me. Okay. Okay. You're gonna put, you, I'm going to take you to the car again and drive you home and let you out. Okay, and then what am I going to do? Well, first you've got to put on the mask. Okay, you've got to put on the mask to drive you home. Right. All right. When I let you out, what do I do? Then you're going to go away. Okay, all right? Right. All right. <laughs> Get in this car again. Hurry up. Tell me you're home. Get rid of you. Yeah. Yeah. Now be quiet and be still. Right in the house. Okay, here we are. Okay, now you go in the house and you be a good kid as soon as I leave. You got that? Right, okay, now you can be inside. You're going to be my dad. You're going to be real happy to see you. Okay. Told you'd love this guy by the end. Destin, I just can't wait to tell you how great that play session was. That was so amazing. Oh, really good. Yeah. We had a really yeah. good time. <laughs> yeah, we did too. We all enjoyed watching it. Look at her face. <laughs> Look at her face. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's really you must have felt very good about it too. You no whining forehead. What we saw when you first came in here. Yes. You were really having fun, weren't you? Yeah, I really was. I I was impressed with Jay, you know, the way he was in control mm -hmm. and seemed to have it all planned out and he knew every little detail that he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of that's because you were you were letting him do that. Yeah. You, were, you were relaxed into it and you were letting him control you yeah. and, and so he became a better controller. He was good at it. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, and all those uh, power struggles that, that went on in the past, all those jockeying for position kinds of things that used to go on, just cropped out of it. Mm -hmm. He seemed to know what he wanted and was able to direct you and with just a question here and there, just to make sure you were facilitating his his goals, uh, you then, you know, just got what you needed to go ahead and play it out and yeah. responded very sincerely.
sincerely, I'm sure that he got a lot of satisfaction out of that. Yeah, like that look in his face when, at the very end when uh, you were his father again, accepting him back back in home. That was just precious. Yeah. He was happy, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, the look, on, just... the look on his face is unbelievable. That's it. Yeah. So it seems like the major thing that was uh, so troublesome to you and Kath in getting the control uh, area seems to have really uh, uh, dropped out as a, as a major issue between you. It seems to be very flexible. Mm -hmm. you know, it just seems like you've, you've, both, you've all pulled out of that as, as, a, as an area between you. And from what you're telling me about what goes on at home, it seems like it's happening yeah. at home too. It's really carried through at home, I think, a lot. Yeah, we don't have changed. any of the big explosions like we like we had when we first came. Yeah. It's, it's not like that anymore. Mm -hmm. Jay doesn't always like what we want him to do, and we don't always agree on Everything's stuff. not always smooth all the time. <laughs> but we don't. I mean, we use the, the limit setting, and it's mm -hmm. just sort of one, two, three, and Jay knows mm -hmm. that there's a definite end and results. And so mm -hmm. he, goes, he may not like it, but he, he knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, don't, I don't end up getting mad all the time like mm -hmm. I used to. Yeah. Yeah. So the outcomes are more suitable to everybody. Yeah. To everybody, even Jay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, I don't think Jay feels like he has to try to come against me all the time. Mm -hmm. We're not always, he's not always trying to step on me anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like he tries to do that to me anymore so much. So you're... Uh, out of the power of business with him too. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. I think so. Well, that's really very exciting to hear. Yeah. I love watching y'all play like that. <laughs> that was so neat. I had a good time. It's neat to be able to play, you know, with your son like that. And mm -hmm. to, to be able to let him sort of be creative and in control at the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. I, I thought he was very creative with his little drama. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's always been creative. Oh That's God. right. Yeah, but sometimes <laughs> creativity <laughs> wasn't channeled in that sort of uh -huh. I wasn't having as much fun with it before. It's sort of constructive creativity now. Yeah. 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 I think we all have a good time with this creativity now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You don't feel as though it's uh, winding you up uh, the loser. Right. It doesn't work against us so much anymore. Mm -hmm. Now for the nice little theme song. So they're volunteers. Again, I think they're families that went through the program. back this camera so that it's more like that. Thoughts, feelings, fantasies, reactions as you saw that. Please. I thought it was interesting that uh, in the earlier session the son was the aggressor and yes. in the, this session he allowed his father to be in charge again. Yes, we will talk about trust. that. No, no, but he was, he almost mimicked the exact same aggressions. Mm -hmm. Tying, knife, money. I mean, he used this, he has his vocabulary of symbols, mm -hmm. and he used them, he intertwined. But we'll talk more on that, because that's a very interesting kind of thing. Notice the fluidity that they both had. Essen was remarkable, really remarkable. And so was Jay, in the fluidity between brain states. So they're in total magic mind, all right, kid, and then they're, okay, so what do I do next? Okay, so I'm going to do, 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 
They're going back and forth. There's, yeah, Nephilim around them. They're bouncing from magic my world, frontal boom, prefrontal cortex. And that's really, really important when you're doing this kind of stuff because there's a lot of aggression and other kinds of things, talk about real aggression, going on there. So you've got to have those boundaries. And they're marvelous at how they kept in a very bimonic, even when they're in their boundary settings, they were bimonic. As you know, I, I study Tung Soo Do. There's good reasons why it is an ex the context is extremely ritualistic, extremely formal. You have to stand with your feet touching. And Sabanin, my teacher, will call us if your feet aren't touching. If you I mean, everything is, you've got to bow, all that. In fact, it was awkward for me in the beginning. It was uncomfortable. All the sir, yes sir, all that stuff. That's not who I am, as you know. But I realized within this context, because you're going to be bah, doing all kinds of stuff, you better be really contained. You better have a lot of PFC door slot. You better be very controlled if you're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. That's a very controlled form of violence, let's face it. Am I breaking three boards? So in a very different but similar fashion, different stakes, so to speak, they're doing a marvelous job. A lot of control. I remember when I told you the different positions a the therapist takes. One is being in it, and reflecting. The other is getting directive or setting limits. So you're creating that. Um, let's talk about it. Oh, by the way, notice in latency, because he's a classic latency kid, they'll use people as figures. As kids use little figures, and kids have little robbers and all that, latency now will actually use people whether it's their peers or their parents, to play. It's still play therapy, but now it's the actual adult person is doing the scene. And so they were so wonderful in their magic mind. So even when Aston closes the door, he goes. I mean, it's, it's beautiful, the reality of the imageries. Um, let's look at it from shifting. Remember we talked way back when we talked about shifting creating in others our own inner states. So if we look at the waiting room scene, oh, remember the different shifting positions in a sense? Parents will shift on their kids, the wounded child. The, what, if we look at from that cosmology, what is being shifted onto, or what shift part is Jay carrying out? He's not the wounded child. Well, he's wounded, but that's not the part he's carrying out. Do you remember some of the different parts as the perfect child? A rebellious child. He is acting out the rebellious child. Right? And if you look at the waiting room, right, what is he shifting on to Esten and Kathy? How are they feeling in that waiting room? Frustrated. Frustrated. Yeah. Angry. Helpless. They can't get this damn kid out of moon mode. Finally, you know, and, and it's amazing if you watch Esten, the different, he does the contempt thing. He does the grabbing thing, the, uh, he does the critical thing, he even does the withdrawal. Fine, I wish you were on the moon. He does all those amygdalated ways of responding, which are totally dysfunctional. But Jay is doing a brilliant job of shifting onto them how he feels. He feels angry, he feels frustrated, he feels helpless, and not in control. Their statement really be, I went out and control this kid. Right. I don't feel in control of my life. I, don't, I feel you are controlling me. So I will shift that back at you. He does it brilliantly. Now, also notice that shifting is a way of forming contact. There's a lot of engagement, right down to grabbing. So it's an, he uses his oppositionality in shifting as a means to connect. It's a dysfunctional means of connect, but it's a lot better than no contact. They're very involved with him. Damn it, pulling him, all that stuff. So then we can hypothesize that there's enough safety that gets formed between them so that now, interesting enough, Jay feels safe enough around his dad so he can start playing out some of these shifts. He can be in a dynamic, psychodynamic sense, the aggressor, right? Identification with the aggressor. He comes in, he's going to rob his dad. He's going to tie him up. We look at that as a shift, oh my God. I become, you, you, Esten, are going to experience my inner world. I feel totally tied up by you. I feel brutalized by you. I feel my independence, autonomy, me as a causative agent is 
totally bound. You are robbing from me my freedom, my autonomy, my cause, ability. So, so he shifts it brilliantly on him. But he feels safe enough to do that. That's cool. And of course, we should take money. Money, give me money. How much money? Give me all your money. So money in some sense, what does money mean here? It could be multiple things. What? Power. Yeah, it could mean, I mean, again, there's no right, there's many right answers. I would think that's one of them. In that particular scene, money in many ways is power, liberty, freedom, control, all that stuff that's really precious to me that you've taken away. And Essence doing a great job. I mean, again, I wouldn't, ow, that hurt. He was real, he was real. It was, that's why it's really important to keep that prefrontal cortex, wait a minute, so now I do this, now, that's control. I told you about borderline kids, and they lose that boundary in play. And I had a little plastic spider in the sand world thing, and they suddenly see it as real again. They lose that boundary. They keep forgetting. You know, PFC is they're lost now in the orbital flow of magic mind. And then, as this evolves, he now, as he nicely points out, says, "You know, I feel so safe around you, Dad. Here, you be the aggressor. Let's reown this. You, you can reown this. You can. I feel safe enough that you be the aggressor. I'm going to guide you in how to do this." You kidnap me, you tie me up. I love when he took his knife and took it down. He's like, still in any guess, he's like, hey, cut it out. I'm like, dude. And when he says he's thinking about it, but he's going to come up with the money, Jesus. But they have this beautiful dance. And I think the money there really, what does money there mean? And he makes sure, by the way, you notice how many times he says, now there's no funny stuff, and you're basically, you're not going to get that money back. It's not 5000 it's $10,000. And you're not going to get it back. What is money? You betcha. Love. How much do you love me? How much do you love me, Dad? Will, will, you, will you wake up in the middle of the night and, and, and take out a loan for 10000 not five, $10,000. And you're never going to get the money back. All you're going to get back is me. Is that enough? Is that good? Am I good enough? Oh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. I'm going to start getting teary-eyed. Oh, it's just fantastic. And then that ending when they're hugging... Oh, I would have given up $100,000. <gasps> Nowadays it'd be a billion dollars. I would have given up $10 billion, $100 billion if I had for you, son, because money is nothing. You are everything to me. They hug. Oh, God, that's beautiful. Okay? So you see the, the shifting, how this shifting shifts. I love this tape. Now, okay, family therapist, let's look at it from a family therapist position. You're Mnuchin. You're those guys. Do you remember the kind of the main assumption in family therapy, in systems theory? Please. Sort of that everything affects everything else. Correct. The family is a mobile, right? We got mom, Kathy. We got the father, dad. We've got the identified patient, right, in their language. Yeah, what's J? And what, what's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a mobile, everything's balanced out. But what's the real assumption here in, in systems theory? What's the function of the identified patient? Do you remember this stuff? Or you have this stuff? Well, I'm playing out the exactly, exactly. The whole assumption is that the real issue is here. And the child is playing out issues between parents. And in some way or another, unifies the parents. They mobilize together in a sense, against or worrying about or whatever, the kid. Let us imagine. Let us imagine that between these two, actually, let's go to these two first. Because, by the way, family systems is always interested in the other generation. The parents' parents. There's at least three sets of folk the patient, the parents, and the parents' parents, in the, at least in the room, theoretically. So the shifts go all the way down. Let us imagine the issues of power and control might be going on between Esten and Kathy, you think? I mean, come on, it's almost like a step, I can just imagine it in the olden days. She's got that, in all due respects, you sweetie, that whiny forehead, it's cold. I don't mean to mock you, but I love how you say cold every time I hear that. Jane, stop it, it's cold. <laughs> I can imagine she thinks that Esten is a Bruno. It's an asshole. It reminds me of step parents where the mom, right, 
She's a single parent with this child who's kind of a little hellion. She meets a cool guy, Marine or whatever. He's great, he's strong, he's good, he's great with the kid until they get married. Now she's counting on him to get the kid in bed and brush teeth. And the kid's pissed. He's acting out. And then the mom indulges him and says, okay, don't worry about it. And the dad's pissed. It puts it that it should be exactly the opposite. She has the bio relationship. She put him to bed and let dad be the one who takes him out to hog nuts, for God's sake, stepdad. But she's afraid because then he, will, he won't like her and he'll want to live with his dad. What are all those dynamics? In a certain way, I bet it's what's going on there. I bet she thinks he is Bruno, and no offense to anybody called Bruno, and is mean, so she gets saw there, there now, and in some way is empowering, over-empowering Jay. I'm sure, I would guess, Essence pissed at her that she's you're such a wuss. You never stand up to him, so now I have to do all the work. I bet he is pissed. Gurney, without probably ever saying any of that, is basically saying, Eston, dude, lighten up. Lighten up, dude. Play with your boy. He's got a fabulous imagination. By the way, so do you. And what does she say, of course, to Kathy? Remember? Tighten up, for God's sakes! He needs to lighten up. He needs to tighten up. I could just see how uncomfortable you were. And so that woman saying, squirting water. Oh, God, I don't even know what to do. What? You've got to set limits. And I love the word. It's a requirement. And she does all the empathy. And I bet Essence going, yeah, finally. That's brilliant. Because guess what? I bet, I don't know if it's her dad or mom or somebody, was Bruno to her. You think she's just cowering in this marriage? I bet she cowered in her origin, family of origin. Somebody was critical and mean and controlling and all that stuff. So little Jay is... He's doing the play therapy for Eston and for Kathy. They could be the ones playing that play. Well, actually, we'll get to that for a moment with Eston. And of course, you know Eston had a controlling dad or mom. Somebody controlled this guy and beat down his spirit. And he wished he could have done what Jay's doing to him. Basically, eh, fuck you, man. Oh, gross. Sorry. <laughs> that was gross. And now I have no place to wipe it. I apologize. That's just totally gross on camera. Anybody have a Kleenex? You have a, thank you. But in any event, fortunately, Jay did not just toss. Thank you. Thank you. And I, all right. Fortunately, he didn't do that. But he basically, but you know, Essen wanted to do to somebody in his life and, and to her probably. And she wanted to do that to him and somebody in her life. It was fabulous how it all gets. And then she, she Gurney, does this brilliant intervention. You lighten up, you tighten up. Not to be crass, he's getting some tonight. Did you see the look? Did you see the look? <laughs> I love to watch them. Her, she is beaming with love for this man, rightfully so. Because now he's the good daddy. He's the caring, strong, but also able to say, here, take it over, son, and I'm going to play with you, and we're going to be, and I can take that disgusting, oh, it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Anything else I've left out of any of this? Ah, right. Let me tell you how I used, I don't do a lot of this formal familial therapy anymore. I did at points. There are several populations I did it with. I, again, Bernard Gurney, this is actually Louise Gurney. I said Phyllis, she looks like a Phyllis to me somehow. It's not Phyllis, it's Louise Gurney. Sorry, Louise. Now Langreff has taken it to the world. And there's clinics now that teach it and have people, and as I said, they're very structured. If you are going to teach it, as I suggest, really help them know what they're doing before they go into that room. I use it with, any time I need to really make a strong connection between a parent and a child. I really need to make that connection. So I had one case where dad was in New York. He missed basically the first three years of these kids' lives. One was three, one was five. He's now coming back. The court orders. He has visitation. He hasn't really seen them much. He's done a few visits. So they order some kind of what now would be called reunification therapy. So what are you going to do with a three or five? Well, I'm going to teach this guy to do this stuff. Of course. There's no better way to bond. And he learned it very well. The mom was disgusted. She was furious because it was actually working. 
these kids adored this man. They were so excited. And why is he dead? Now here's a weird population I did this with. There was a while where I would have alleged perpetrators of molest or other abuse where, the, I mean, again, eventually you have to do a reunification program with those guys. You're not, they don't, you're not gonna do a parentectomy. It's not like they're never gonna see their kid again. So what the heck do you do? I mean, obviously you send them, those days Larry Corgan had about the only group in town for alleged perpetrators. Because it wasn't a true finding, but they didn't know. And, uh, so I thought, what better way to inoculate than to teach empathy? Because if nothing else, this is, in those days I didn't use the term bimonic, but that's what it is. And that's what I would do. I would teach them how to be child directed, child centered, think, feel, say anything, do all that, and be attuned and resonative with the inner world of the child. There is going to be a nice end video, so you're going to want to watch that end video. Um, so I would teach that population. And I was, there was also one part of me that thought, am I teaching the fox to be that much better in getting the little chick closer? S some folks, by the way, aren't good at learning this. Some folks are tone deaf. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Some folks are rhythm deaf, they don't. And some folks really have a great difficulty or seemingly incapable, like being colorblind, to really resonate with another, with kind of attachment disorder or otherwise. I see you really like to put the paint on me. I don't want you to, I mean, you could just say it was so mechanical. And as soon as the context changed, they wouldn't be able to then change it because they weren't teaching the spirit of it. So that's frustrating. I also, um, now, now what I do, you give me a, a reasonably decent functioning parent of any kid up to age six. And I'm going to tell them, oh, by the way, I want you to see this book, solid book. Can't control what you do. I know how busy your life is, but here's a freebie. I'm not selling anything. There's no charge. Here's the book. Here's my Zetel. Here's my videotape of how to do this. And I have a little blurb along with Stalag's but I have my blurb. And I say, please, please, 15 minutes once a week, <coughs> do this with your kid. And I have parents of four-year-olds and five-year-olds. And hopefully they're doing this with, sorry? Which book were we talking about? Until we were six. I give them until we're six. Send them that. And it has a whole chapter on special playtime. I have actually some really, I have a couple of three-year-olds that are just having tantrums and stuff. So I'm doing a whole bunch of different things. And I see them individually, but we are a team. And I'll just tell you, I want to have team kid. I wish I had a t-shirt print shop in the back. So whatever kid I'm seeing, team Evelyn, team Howie, whatever. Literally. And the parents wear, we'd all wear these. Do you um, teach parents how to distinguish between like the special playtime oh, and then yes. regular playtime? Oh, totally. So and the rules are different? Totally. Think, feel, say anything, do just about anything, 15 minutes. No phone. No nothing. Just you and me together here. I reflect. That's all. Don't ask any questions. All the stuff I ask you to do. Mm -hmm. This is hard, harder for them to do it. They're not as trained as you are. Now, if they want, I will say, if you want to come in, I mean, I'll do it more formally and I'll teach it to you directly. I'll have them come and watch some of the sessions I do with her, if it's a three-year-old or something. In fact, a lot of times the first few sessions are that way because they kind of want to check me out and the kid needs to feel comfortable or whatever. And I say, this is different. By the way, 15 minutes, 30 minutes max because it's exhausting. If you're doing it right, it's exhausting. At least in the beginning. E even in the end, I, I don't see more than three kids in a row. I'm exhausted. Spend that much time focusing. And again, I have all these other things I'm thinking about in addition to just the reflecting. And I do show them the other, because in my tape, you can see me you know, talking with the figures and doing tradeologies and all that stuff. And that's, it's deceivingly simplistic. It looks really simple until you actually sit down and try and actually do it in a fluid, consistent basis. But I say it's, and tell the kid, this is special playtime. And I do say, because this is one thing that bugs parents, really, you can say anything? Anything, even the F word, shit, ha ha, yeah. But when a kid does do something in here that's not okay in the world out there, and I've already told you this, I'd say to the kid, I know how much fun it is, I know how great it is to say shit or whatever in here. And I don't say you can't do it out there, because of course you can, watch me. If you do it out there, whoa, man, bonkeronis. People are gonna go nutso on you. Oh my God, this little kid.
did. I did have a little three-year-old. That was one of the reasons he was brought. He kept saying fuck out there. It's the weirdest thing to hear a three-year-old say fuck. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. And he doesn't really know, but it, he knows it has a tremendous impact. People got just like, oh my god. They can't get this kid to, we tried reinforcements. Kid. Nothing was more reinforcing than the reaction of fuck. And watching everybody just go bonkers around it. It was unbelievable. But, so yeah, can you do it? Yeah, there's, there's one that came in. I love this. F-U-V-K. Funk. <laughs> it's the most perfect approximation. It really isn't. But it, it isn't fuck. It's funk. Anyway. Okay, so I use it in those contexts. I did have one family I thought it would be beautiful to have them do this. Gave them this tape. Gave them, that's it. I do give them this tape. The kids are older. And the other stuff. And they came back, I, think I told you this, and they said, love it, love this stuff. There is no way I'm going to tell my girl. She can think, feel, say anything, do just my thing. You do it. You're good at it. You do it. It's like asking me to teach my kid piano. I don't play piano. I think she ought to learn how to play piano. I hire a teacher. They're good at it. Fair enough. I saw an individual, play therapy, did this stuff. Parents eventually divorced. The father's son from a former marriage eventually molested this girl. I mean, things just went, whoa! So it became a very complicated case, eventually. And the last time I saw her, she was 19 at the San Diego airport. I had just come back with Duran from Hawaii. And she looks at me and goes, Dr. V. I'm like, huh? And she told me who she was. I was like, oh my god, look at you, you big, gorgeous woman, young woman. Yeah. Okay, so, so you can integrate this in a fluid fashion. You've got to be comfortable with it. You've got to know how to do this. I will say, way back when, in this class, you used to have to do a, a final was whatever you chose it to be. You had to do a final. It could be whatever you want. I didn't care. It's up to you. You're the boss. So Mitch Perlman, who's now a well-known psychologist in this town, way back said, you know, I am a psych assistant to a guy, I'm going to form a filial therapy group as my project. I said, cool, man, you make money on it. This is cool. Which is what he did. And what's neat, by the way, I've never done it in group form. One of the things that happens, and you don't see so much in here, is it does become like group therapy. So they do talk about the relationship between Esther and Kathy and what was your dad and mom like, Esther, and with your dad and mom. You know, the classic group therapy kind of thing, and these people all get very close to each other, and that's very cool. And that's what happened to Mitch, Mitch's group. And they got so close that when Mitch left his psych assistantship, they, the group continued on their own. So that's very cool. Okay, any other thoughts, feelings, fancies? I'm gonna show you one quick thing. We're good? Got this? Okay. All right, so let's see if this is gonna work. It's gonna work. <laughs> Okay, so let me make the cam. I like that. I like the positive thing. Yay for your optimistic part. Your shen was said. It was so assuredly said. So let me get the camera. I'm glad I remembered this. Camera back tuned into the screen. How do I do that? I do it this way. Okay. Turn off light. Change menu. Computer access, yes, buddy? Yes. Laptop. Laptop. Yeah, I went to sleep, waking it up. Sound should work, everything should work, yes? Okay. I just click on go, yes? We are, oh, I'm going to do the intro again. I hope this works. We are the storytelling people. We are co-creators in our narrative of each other's lives. Please work. Yes!
tell you a story about once upon a time. There was a poor new boy. And Bella wanted to go to the beach. He said, Dad, please, Dad, take me to peace. Which beach did you want to go to? Beach. Yeah. Why did Bella want to go to Makapu Beach? Yeah, he wanted to swim. And when Bo and Dad got to Makapu Lake Beach, the waves were really big. Was Bo scared? Yeah. Did he want to swim anyway? Yeah. What happened? They swam out under the big waves. Don't cry. Don't cry, Bo. Don't cry, Bo. It came from a, uh, a, a movie on body surfing. Now, yeah, I would have preferred that he would have done it in a narrative, not asking questions thing. But it is so beautiful the way he interacts with his boy and how he helps him narrate his life. Connection. Many ways. Even with an autistic, obviously severely autistic kid. But then look at them in the water. Ah, they're so, so connected. So have a connecting week. I'll see you next week. We have two more to go.